Hi, today we are going to look at a few tips and tricks that will help you when you are doing your regression analysis. The first one involves creation of dummy variables. Now when we do regression, we know we have to create dummy variables when we have factor variables. In general, when you have a factor with n levels, we have to create n minus 1 dummy variables. Here is an example. Here is a data set called house prices and this is what it looks like. If we look at the structure of this data set, we see that there are two factor variables, brick and neighborhood, with two and three levels respectively. So we have to create uh, one dummy variable for brick and two for neighborhood. And we do this with simple if-else statements as, as shown here. Now if we look at our data set, we have introduced three new columns which are numeric variables. So now when we do our regression, we can use these numeric variables instead of the original factor variables as our predictor variables. But what if our data set looked like this? So here I'm loading a more complex data set which looks like this. So you see this data set, it has a variable called brand, type, proc brand, processor brand, etc. And here are what these variables look like in detail. So brand is a factor with 14 levels. Proc brand is a factor with 5 levels. Proc type has 26 levels, etc. Now how do we convert this into dummy variables? Obviously, it's not feasible to sit and do all of these using if-else statements. So luckily for us, there is a trick available in R to solve this problem for us. So this function is found in a library called caret. So first I'm going to load that library, which you have to download and install if you do not already have it. And I'm going to give this command dummy variables, dummy vars. And this command is structured similar to a regression uh, model, except there is no response variable. So I give dummy vars till day my list of variables for which I want to create dummies. In the next step, I just use the predict function just like in regression, creating a new data set, predict dummy, that's the name of my dummy model, comma data, the data on which I want to predict. Now if I look at this new data, I find that it has created all these dummy variables for me. So for each variable with factor variable with n levels, it has created n minus 1 dummy variables and given them the values 0 or 1. If I look at the structure of this data set, you see it has all of these different new variables available now. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to extract the numeric data from the original data set and bind it to my new data set which is the recoded or the dummy variable data set to create a new data set which now has 74 variables including all the dummy variables which looks like this, here's the head of this data set. So you see, I've retained MRP, HDD, memory and screen from the original data set and added all my dummy variables. Now I've created the data set that I want, now I can go ahead and do my regression analysis etc as usual. So that was the first trick that I wanted to show you. The next trick has to do with checking how well your regression model works. So I'm going to start by doing a simple logistic regression model um, using a credit card default data set. And this is what the data set looks like. So it has default credit card default status data for 10,000 records. And, and so the sample size is large, 10,000. So what I would normally do is split my data set into training and validation, build my model on the training data, test it on the validation data. Okay, but what if my data set was much smaller? So what I've done in these few steps is resample the original data set to create a smaller data set of sample size 60, 30 yeses and 30 noes have been picked from the original data set. What if this was all the data I had? What if my data sample size was only 60? Then I don't have enough samples to 
split the data into training and validation and then build the model on one set and test it on the other set. What do I do in such cases? Okay, so I'm going to build the model GLM default is my response variable, student balance and income are my predictor variables. This is what my model looks like. And now I have this alternate way of testing how well my model works, which is something called cross validation using the bootstrapping method. So this function is found in library boot. So I'm going to load library boot. And the name of the function is cv.glm. The arguments it takes is first the data set, second the model that I want to validate. So I give cv.error where I'm going to store my result equal to cv.glm x comma model dot one. I run this and from cv.error I'm going to extract the third element which happens to be the error rate and print it out using a simple paste function. So my error rate according to this method is 8.13%. So this is a method you would want to use when you have small data sets and you do not have the option of splitting into training and validation data sets. The third thing that we are going to look at today is something called a decision tree. Now this is another way of doing predictive modeling in statistics. One way we have looked at is regression. This is an alternative to regression. And what I'm going to show you are two kinds of trees called classification trees and regression trees. Commonly together they are called CART. Okay, a classification tree is used when we want to predict a categorical outcome, similar to when we would use a logistic regression. There are many packages to do this in R. The most common is called R part. So I'm going to load library R part. I'm going to load a data set called kyphosis, where my response variable called kyphosis is in fact a binary. It is a categorical outcome. So I'm going to use the R part function to build a classification tree using a syntax very similar to the GLM. So I'm, instead of GLM, I say R part, my response variable, tilde, my list of predictor variables, method equal to class. Here I'm telling R that I want to build a classification tree to predict a categorical outcome. Now I can simply plot this tree using this, these two steps. And what you have here is something called a classification tree, which is one type of a decision tree, which allows you to walk along this tree with a new data point. At each node, you make a decision, yes or no, depending on the question being asked. For example, is start greater than or equal to 14.5? Following these yes or no answers, you end up at one of the tips of the tree where you can predict the state of the response variable for a given observation. Okay, So this is an alternative way to do things from regression analysis. So here's another data set on which I'm going to do the same thing. This is the same credit card default data set we saw a minute ago. So I'm going to build now a classification tree model for the same data set and plot it in the same way. So here is my decision tree model for the same data set uh, as an alternative to my logistic regression. Now just like we do linear regression when we have continuous uh, response variables, we have the equivalent with decision trees and this is called a regression tree. So here my response variable is continuous, numeric. So here is an example of that. This is in the empty cars data set. My response variable is the fuel mileage or miles per gallon MPG. So I'm, I've built a decision tree in much the same way as I'll fit a linear model. And here I plot the tree using the same kind of syntax. And here what I have is my simple decision tree for this data set. This is an alternative to my linear regression. Another package which offers tools to do decision trees is called Party, which builds something called a conditional inference tree. And it works like this. So I'm going to load the library Party, And 
use the command C tree, conditional inference tree, on the same data using the same response variable. And here I get a slightly uh, more readable, nicer plot, which is basically my decision tree for miles per gallon in the em empty cars data set. So the way I read this is, is the weight less than 2.32? If yes, I go to this branch. If no, I go to that branch. In this branch, in this subset of data, this is my distribution of my response variable miles per gallon. In the other branch, I ask a further question where I make another decision which involves a split into two parts. And in each of those resulting subsets, this is the distribution of my response variable. So like I said, this is an alternative to regression analysis and there is not a clear rule as to when this works better than regression and when regression works better. A good um, rule or good uh, practice is to generally try both and see which model fits your particular data set the best. So that is it for this session. Thanks for watching.